Welcome to The Beat from the True Wellness Center. I'm your host, Kelly Kennedy. And The Beats is truly from my heart to yours to help you empower and inspire you to learn how the body actually does work. I am bringing you my friends, my colleagues, the most incredible minds from around the world that I have been able to learn from. And I want to share them all with you. So that's what The Beats is really about, is teaching people what I've been able to learn about how the body works and trying to give that to you in a very simple and practical way to give you things to change your life because you got this. This is all about you and having the ability to heal your own body from within. And that's really my message is from my heart to yours. Welcome to the beats. Welcome to learning how your body works and welcome to opening your heart. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for your time and your attention as we focus in on this week's episode of The Beats. Welcome back to The Beats with Kelly Kennedy, and I am thrilled today. This is a podcast I've looked forward to for quite some time. We have Kenny Lou and Gina Bria, uh, Gina Bria from the Hydration Foundation and Kenny Lou from Spring Aqua, which is the best water that I've ever drank. And we are going to be talking about structuring water, quality of water, and all things. And many of you have already been exposed to Gina Bria through our podcast, through summits, through so many different programs that we do together. But This is a very different podcast for me. One, I got my Bam Bam hair. Never done that before on my podcast. I'm sitting because I intend this to be a little bit longer than our typical podcast. When I started my career, somebody asked me today, did you have a career before this? And I was like, huh, that's interesting. Have I? I was in sales. And what did I sell? Water filters. My very first email when I was, you know, I, outside of college, I had my Kelly at Cornell.edu, but then my first regular email was water snob at Comcast.net. I have been a water snob my whole life. I grew up in upstate, western, southern tier in New York, and we had a family home that was on 200 acres and had a well. And then we lived in a town where we had municipal water. And I always couldn't wait to get to the farm to open up the water and drink a glass. Everybody made comments about it. Like, why is Kelly so obsessed with the water? It just tasted different than municipal water. I used to bring home gallon jugs from the farm to our municipal home. And I've always never been a big drinker of anything but tea and water. I know we didn't grow up with soda in my home and I have like become a connoisseur of water. So every year, hopefully most years anyway, I get to go to Baden Baden, Germany, where it's the largest medical week conference in Europe. And they have a station over there that's my favorite because it's water station and it's all different bottles of water in glass bottles from different living aspects of mountains where they've received this living water. And I get to taste the difference between the different waters. And it's like what most people look at as wine tasting, I look at as water. So I introduce you all to Kenny because I learned about Kenny through Gina Bria and Dr. Christine Schaffner. And I've been looking at different water beyond purification, but structuring and creating truly therapeutic water. And Dr. Schaffner was like, you got to try Spring Aqua. And I was like, okay. So I talked to Kenny and I instantly got the science of what he explained. And I was like, okay, send me one. And can we have a podcast? And I mentioned this before, but I just want to reiterate who this man is. He said, well, I want you to drink my water for at least a month first. Then we can have a conversation about you promoting my water. And that spoke to the quality of the human that represents this company, that created this company. Because most people in our world today are looking, how can I get a dollar made as fast as possible? And he was all about the quality of our relationship and the quality of the water that I was drinking to make sure that I was committed to it and devoted to it, which speaks beyond volume. So, and Gina is just brilliant. And I'm so excited that the two of them get to talk about water and structuring water and all the things. So welcome both of you. That was a very long intro, but this is going to be, I really wanted people to have a context of that. So welcome Gina. Welcome Kenny. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kelly. Looking forward to this conversation. And do you want to say anything about meeting Kenny and how that all went, Gina, and how, like how you got involved? (laughs) I do. 
true. <laughs> um, let's see, Kenny and I, I mean, the, the, um, the, the just be drawn together by um, magnetic frequencies, like this stuff really happens. Um, it went Kenny, uh, I was uh, attracted to Kenny's work. He was attracted to what I was doing with the Hydration Foundation. There was a magnetism there. And then we found out that we shared the same birth date. <laughs> you know? That's so cool. <laughs> and so we feel very cosmically aligned. And we have a lot of fun conversations about what we can do on behalf of water and what's, you know, next big thing in the world to do. And um, we've just um, thought together, laughed together, and out of that, I think, has come some amazing um, openings that our world needs. Anyway, it's, you know, we're being called to, to, to this location to help our uh, world become more saturated with mother love and mother water. And, um, and just how do you actually accomplish that in the world? Well, you need you need the right people. They need to be on the right band wave. Um, and then we just let water flow. So that's, that's Kenny and me. <laughs> and what is your mission with the Hydration Foundation, if you can share that? Yeah, it's very simple. It's to better hydrate people, plants, animals, and soils. So we have a big mission. That, that covers everything. I mean, I can say microbes, but it's really in the soils anyway. So, yeah. I mean, one of the most important things we are trying to do with Kenny here is uh, is hydrate soil microbes so that they can take over the decontamination work that they are supposed to be doing, but they're they're too dehydrated to get done. So that's super interesting. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Thank okay. you. And <laughs> Kenny, do you want to share how you got into doing what you're doing with Spring Aqua? Well, I'm, I've been an entrepreneur for a long time, and I used to be in the natural, uh, natural food supplement, whole foods type of business. And you travel the world, you meet different people, you get to build lots of cool relationships. And it was in 2014, I had the opportunity to travel uh, back to Taiwan, where I'm from, to um, do a translating meeting for kind of a U.S. company that was interested in doing business in Southeast Asia and China. So. So because I'm Chinese, I can understand the language. I'm able to translate and help out. And I think it was that it was like about seven or eight people at the meeting. Um, we we talked for seven days, all sorts of stuff. It's quite a bit of work, lots yeah. in detail. At the end of the meeting, there's a gentleman called Mr. Shao. Um, BBH is his nickname. He's a big brother Shao, so it's BBH. <laughs> um, he reached out to me and said, "You're the kid that I want to work with." And so if you can come back in two weeks come to my house. I would love to talk to you about things that we can do together. And I was like, this is pretty cool. He's, he's a pretty prominent guy. So I went back home to Seattle, told my wife, I got to go back to Asia again, because I got something that might be really good for me. I don't know what it is yet, but I'm going to meet someone very important. So I went back and, you know, being, being typical people follow American dreams, right? He took me to McDonald's and say, Hey, this is the, McDonald's. This is the American dream. So we sat in McDonald's. We had, we had breakfast together. <laughs> having a good time and just chatting and I was just, you know, it's all good. We have a good, have a good time. Right. And, um, then I found out, um, he's the guy um, who the, the original Rubik's cube that everyone plays with is the oh. guy who developed that. What? He got the development rights from the Austrian Hungarian inventor to be the very first person on the planet to mass produce it in the late sixties. And then he also is very familiar with frequencies because he has his EKGs, his ultrasounds, infrared technologies, he has lots of patents. He got a lot of FDA approved products. I didn't know that until I met him in person after the meeting and we started talking about all sorts of stuff. And I realized that I found someone that I can relate with and has a lot of cool things I can learn from. And so the water journey came from my dad's friend, Sam, who knew a friend, Professor Henry. And so Henry is this quantum physics guy who had an idea of a kind of a prototype of how water should be, just an idea, and showed me the prototype. And I said to him, well, you're missing an engineer. That's my godfather, right? <laughs> Mr. Mr. Shaw, BBH. I said, look, you need a supply chain, material science. You need a lot of stuff that needs to come in to make this, what I call little baby, grow up. And so I'm the guy who married Professor Henry with Mr. Shaw, brought the marriage together, and I basically funded the startup um, back in 2014 and 2015 is when it began. And I didn't, to be honest, I had no idea I was doing water. <laughs> it was not part of my 
uh, pri I didn't know that this was actually going to lead to water. So a lot of my success and knowledge is the last seven years is fresh and is new. And I've had to go on around to validate a lot of stuff that is it, is it mythical, is it true or not. So I've, a lot of digging the last six to, I would say the six to eight years, right? Trying to figure out and learn it the right way, you know? And so that's kind of how the water kind of story, kind of my life in how I began start the water. And then the concept was really simple was, you know, if we can get water back to its mother nature state, right? Think about nature's water in spring water in the mountain springs. Think about water inside of fruits and vegetables. If we can find water in the natural state, what, couldn't we restore water back into what it's supposed to be, mm -hmm. right? And so we started looking at different springs around the world, looked at all the rock layers, of all the different mountains, looked at um, the Lourdes, for instance, a very famous place, lots of studies, lots of people done studies there. We even have people we know in the Himalayas, and they would take water from the Himalayan springs and bring it down way out there. And then they'll tell us when their children get sick, they'll give it to the kids and they'll heal up faster, right? We also learned from Gina, the anthropologist, that the Incas, they use, they use ceramic tiles. They'll transfer the water from the waterfalls and give it to the farmlands. And the Egyptians use ceramic vessels. And the Indians use copper vessels. And nowadays, we're using plastic pipes, right? Right. So, yeah. So there's all these interesting remedies. You can compare, contrast, and figure it out. So once we're able to understand by the rock-layered process in the mountain and understand what could be in the water from the composition standpoint, you can start to figure out how to build a replica of a spring like the mountain. But the only concern is the kitchen space is really small. So you have to learn how to mimic the processes, right? A little bit of biomimicry. I think that that's too technical for people. I just, I just call it mimicking. That's all it is. Um, so think of our filters are, you know, what you have in your house, um, Kelly and Gina, is, the, is 17 filters. Think of the filters at, as the layered process of the rock stratas right and the water is coming from the tap it's going through those filters as it's going through the different layer of rock and when it comes out the other side turns that tap water makes it into a spring and that's i mean the nicknames we get from this process and people call this my little mini ecosystem in a box so just visualize in your home you have a mini ecosystem in a box or visualize under your sink is no longer just your cleaning supplies but under your sink now is a mountain of spring water Mm. Right, so we get these different nicknames that people give our company out because of how good the water is. But that's the visual I try to educate people. It's really having that spring quality water. So it's different than, say, the reverse osmosis or the electrolysis or bottled water, tap water, because the water comes out alive. It's fresh. Yeah. So maybe I spoke too much, but that's just the backstory. <laughs> no, that's, that's, I really appreciate that. It's great to understand, yeah. you know, how it all comes to be. And you were just looking to mimic what is beautiful and happening in the world. But um, I want to talk about the different types of water you just brought up, filtered reverse osmosis, uh, purified, uh, what's the other word that people use? Distilled water. Sure, sure. There's so many different kinds of water out there. And I think I, this is a subject that really confuses people and they are right. – Everybody's freaking out about gas prices. And I'm like, do you guys know how much you've been spending on water for years? I mean, I've sold water filters since I was 23 years old and I'm 48. And at the time I was like, you guys, you could save so much money. Just buy a filter. <laughs> like <laughs> so much less expensive than going to buy. And then all the plastic bottles and all the things. But let's talk about that for a minute, if you would. I, I, I'm going to share, I'll talk about it, but I want Gina to follow up because I think we need to understand what hydration means. I think, I think the, we got to get that message out. But, um, and I think, I think we all know there's ways to purify water. So there's the distill, distillation is probably, you know, basically steaming it up, to, you know, the, distilled water is the cleanest form of water in terms of taking everything out, right? 100% right. of everything's gone. Um, is it good for you? Well, it's not very hydrating for you <laughs> because there's no minerals, nothing in it, but it is clean water. And sometimes we need it because you live in a very bad area that you have to clean the water. And same with reverse osmosis. It's the same way. It's just another way of purifying the water hundred percent, getting as much stuff out as possible where there's pretty much nothing left. And I don't think there's anything bad about those things. I think there's places in the country on a well, or if you're living next to a chemical plant, you don't really have a choice. You kind of have to purify the water if you think about it, right? But Gina will say, don't drink the water naked. You know, add something to it, right? 
put some put some chia seeds or structured water. So I'll later talk about that in a second. But that hydration part is very important, and we want to embrace the masses because I mean we know a lot of people who have these, you know, distillers or reverse osmosis, but they're just really good at cleaning. And then you have your bottled water industry, which is great because I don't know how long that water, how old that water is. <laughs> You know, we don't know if that water has been there for a month or a couple of days or, and then there's the, the microplastics, but that exists because it's convenient, right? Then you have your really good standard carbon filters that just does basic cleaning, right? And you have your electrolysis. People use electrolysis. Um, I think it's the machine that gets on the countertop and the electrolysis is pretty simple. It's just water coming from the tap. It's using electricity that um, they have the multiple metal plates, right? And on the metal plates, they, it could be made of titanium or platinum or different grades of metal. And then it has the, the minerals reacting with the metal plates as charged with, you know, electricity, man-made 120 volts. And that reaction causes what they call the plus and the minus, the cathode and the and anode, which then splits the water into alkaline water and acidic water. And that's basically what's going on. They all work the same way. With using electricity, it works exactly the same mechanism, no matter what brand it is. It's all very similar. Right. If you don't understand what Kenny just said, go read Invisible Rainbow chapter one over and over and over and over <laughs> until you understand magnetic poles and electricity and how everything is a positive and negative ion in your entire world. So start to understand electricity, please. And then understand how that relates to your body because Gina's gonna talk about that with hydration. Right. And frequency. And and just finish that. So that's just electrolysis. Um I don't know if it's in Mother Nature's intention to use electricity and water. I don't know. But uh, we try we try to at least stay away from that when we did our research to, to just go natural mineral process if we can, right? And then obviously you have your, your regular tap water, which nowadays there's a lot more stuff in the tap water than what it was 20, 30, 40 years ago. And that's because of the environmental toxins. And also you have a lot older infrastructure. If you looked at the pipes in your city, if you look at, go to Los Angeles, look at the pipes, there were there maybe were you know, maybe one inch thick before, they're probably a quarter inch thick now. There's all the stuff <laughs> built in. It's in. It's like your arteries that get clogged. Yeah. Like yeah. clogged with all the toxins that are in the water that builds mm -hmm. up. And yeah. just before Gina has the opportunity, just quickly, Kenny. So with the electrolysis, essentially what that means is you're plugging in a filter of some sort and it has a plate. That, so what your filter is doing is taking it through more of a natural sequence of layering through rocks replicated in the canisters. It, it's, 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 it's like the, the gravity flow. You've got the water pressure coming from the house. And it's yep. going through the gravity is going through the filters and it's mimicking it's going the layered process of the rocks. So the 14 filters is kind of representing that whole flow of how a mountain of spring water is made. Yeah. And each filter has a different, a different. Uh, they are doing different things. Correct. That's and they all, they all work together. Organics, inorganics. It's going to handle all of that. It has a very broad spectrum of frequency from near and far infrared as well. Because remember minerals naturally emit natural frequencies, right? Okay. Right. So, so that think about when, when water goes to the top of the earth and it goes to the bottom of the well, every layer of rock layer is going to go through and it gets to the bottom and somehow it's clean. It's because every rock layer emits a different, different electromagnetic field that literally structures and cleans the water as it goes through. So think of that process. It's happening in your home right now. And, and when somebody puts an electrolysis or electricity, with these metal plates, essentially, just to reiterate, it's taking the cations and the anions, the positive and the negatives, splitting them out, making alkaline water and hydrolyzed water, but those are both instable? Unstable. Un in yeah, unstable, because they only mm -hmm. last for a certain amount of time once exposed to the oxygen in the air. The, and the hydrogen water made from that process is just as a byproduct. So it comes out and you got to capture it really quick. Yeah. We do it through natural minerals. It's very different. And we learn how to dissolve the, the hydrogen in the water so it's stable. So you can have a glass. It can be there for a long time. There's no bubbles in it. Like that's the thing. Uh, it's, that's correct. That's when you know it's fully saturated. Right. That's when it's fully saturated. Yeah. Saturation is a perfect place to invite gina into the hydration conversation <laughs> what is saturation gina what does that mean oh i'm so happy you asked um i want to take you on a little visual journey of the water of water and of course water is made of water with water molecules so if i can get you to think about 
how these molecules are in relationship to each other. So water molecules are constantly in motion. And so the very de definition of hydration is, uh, is the motion that they're in able to get inside your cells and into your tissues? Or is the motion that they're in so chaotic that they're just bumping around and moving out of your system without actually getting saturated? Is your cell membrane able to pull in the, um, the water molecules? Are your tissues able to become saturated and hold that hydration? And you're saying the chaos, which you're going to explain the structuring, I presume. Right. But when they're um, when the molecules are in motion, right, they're more able to be received yeah. or enter in the tissues because yeah. the cell membrane it's a lock and key system, and the cell membrane's more open if the molecules are in motion. Right. Okay. So if they're in motion, what does that mean versus? Well, then it's the quality of the motion. Is the motion chaotic? Is it um, screechy and disharmonized? Or is it um, well-balanced, harmonized, and receptive? it's easy to receive? So I, I want to try to, to shape the idea of water molecules as like the fastest way I can get you to this idea is to say they're singing. <laughs> <laughs> they're singing. Are they singing together in harmony? Are they creating a beautiful complex song that is like a Bach fugue that has many harmonies and all of them work together, even, even disharmonies that come in like a contaminant of some kind that then gets modulated right into the whole song so that it's even more sophisticated and complex and gorgeous or is it chaotic is it cacophonious which is a word for i don't want to ever hear that again cacophony is like yeah, yeah. Sense, right so um so helping us think about water molecules actually singing to us is sort of a new kind of analogy to help us get this idea that um, it's the water molecules that are the medium for passing frequencies. And these, the, they work together. The frequencies, they need some mobile vehicle to help them be waves or to be spheres or to actually release. And nature's designed the water molecule to be the ultimate communication system, the ultimate uh, bandwidth the ultimate um, frequency giver, the ultimate radio station, and therefore the, the quality of those water molecules and how they move together and how we help them move together makes all the difference in what your cells hear or are capable of signaling back and creating a harmonic a system for your, all your tissues and your cells and your systems to run well. So water is like the great radio station, right? And um, even purified water is a bit of a problem because purified water is almost as if the radio station is turned off and all the water molecules have settled. They're not doing anything. They're just pure. <laughs> like the distilled water because it's not live. It's not moving. Right. It's been yeah. stripped. It doesn't have anybody to talk to. <laughs> <laughs> It's singing in a field all by itself. It's just, it's just there, right? So when we uh, get water to this place where it's um, it's uh, touching minerals, singing with minerals, all of that whole harmony creates starts to create a completely different uh, level of how our body is living in space. It's a harmonic harmonic band with. And we're incoming information now that might be uh, contaminated is hitting a whole system which knows how to absorb and hear that and shape it so that it goes um, through the system in a harmonic way. So water, real hydration is deeply related to protecting our tissues and harmonizing all the things that are coming in. 
we've got to have a much bigger definition of hydration than just getting wet, you know, getting moist. So you just said getting moist on my podcast. I'm sorry. I can't let that one go. She just said getting <laughs> moist on my podcast. I just love that. Thank but you. But don't you want to be like juicy, lovely, incredible people? Just a hundred percent. That's a whole different podcast, but yes, I love that. Um, but frequency and absorbing. So you're, so you're, so you're saying if the water molecules are harmonizing with each other and everything is working in harmony, that something disharmonious, like a toxicant, yeah. an emotion, a virus, right. could come up against those cells. And why, Gina, does that absorb into the frequency and make it, as you said, more dynamic? I, right. That wasn't the word you used, but more, yes. you know, so the orchestra is bigger. bigger. Right. Why yeah, exactly. is that instead of disrupting it? Uh -huh. Can you Right, so water molecules, uh, water, it, and I'm really trying to get us down to the details of this. Water is called the universal solvent, right? So when uh, contaminating materials come into molecules already in sync that are in flow and in sync with each other, they know how to rumble that molecule in such a way that it, uh, it is refined uh, perhaps even uh, taken apart and reconstructed as a molecule. Only water does this. It's extraordinary. Water, I'm going to say this in a strange way, but water is like the refiner's fire. It takes um, material, it, it literally is the great alchemy, you know, it, it turning lead to gold. This is actually done through the relationship of the molecules and how they're able to dance and refine whatever material comes in and then shape it so that it becomes valuable to our bodies or our systems or move it on out so that it doesn't have to be part of us. It's making me think of a rock tumbler, right? I, I was obsessed with rock tumblers when I was a kid. I got one for Silas. He's not nearly as enthralled with it as I was, but you literally take sharp rocks that are jagged and so forth. You put them in this container, you add a little water and a little other metal. And I can't remember what the mineral is, but it's a mineral that you add. Maybe it's graphite. And you just spin it for hours and hours and days and days. And the more you spin it, the more smooth the rocks become. And then you dump out the sludge, which is all minerals. And it's a fascinating process to me because I look at that sludge and I'm like, oh, I want to put that in my soil. Like, I'm sure that's amazing for my soil. Right. But that's what you're, that's what the water is doing. It's pulling in yeah. the minerals from the rocks and then taking it out and softening the rocks that are left in the container. And so when we do this in our person and what, what is the benefit of doing that and why would we want to do that? I'm asking like I don't know, but I would like to know what, how you would answer that question. Well, you get an extremely refined and heightened and healthy system that's coordinating and singing the best possible, most interesting song. It's because the cells communicate via... They're singing together now instead of like um, uh, dental decay, <laughs> right? Your body's going, hey, we need to send some materials up to... Um, the gums and the enamel, does everybody know their job? We need to send that signal during according to circadian rhythms. I mean, it is so complex, Kelly. We will never be able to take it apart. We are an absolutely miraculous system at working at the highest possible uh, coordination. And when we lose that coordination by having poor foods, by having stressful life, by having lack of sleep, uh, by having children. <laughs> you know, all of that, in other words, the assaults and the insults on our system, especially as modern people, where there's never any playtime after work. You know, there's never any gather around the fire and just tell a hoot story. You know, there's we're missing so much pleasure and joy in life by the modern construct. But, you know, when we get this hydration level going, then that uh, that that vibe that we're giving off, you know, it just what do we call that? It's like viral shedding our own uh, great frequencies, 
that is amazing what we can be both to ourselves and to others because you know if you're well coordinated and you're singing a very harmonic and glorious and unique song you know it's going to be unique to you then what happens is that is shed among all the people you're around you just walk into a room or you just move through your house you are giving off frequencies but all of that is dependent on the sink of the water molecule that you're ingesting and taking baths and being around so you know we want to get natural waters in our life as as much as possible ocean swimming you know hot springs uh, and and then the potential to actually have our own in our own home to turn our tap into a spring this is what technology this is why we're modern people this is what, <laughs> we crashed it all <laughs> Let's use our brain to go back, to get back to um, how to recover. Yeah. And that's and why I love working with Kenny, because we're doing the recovery work. This is, let's go. <laughs> and to hydrate the soil, which we're going to talk about. But in that regard, and I don't know the answer to this, Kenny, to be honest with you. I know you have a point of, of use system for the kitchen sink, but what about showering and, and your dishes and your clothes and because the water is insipidus, right? Insidious rather throughout all of our lives. We can't get away from it. The food we're cooking in, how we're washing our vegetables when they come from home from the grocery store. Like I, people are using nasal flushes and neti pots. And I'm always like, what kind of water is it you're using? And they're like tap water. I'm like, Ugh. you know, and showering. Everybody's like, oh, but I walk around my bottled water, but I'm showering for 20 minutes a day in tap water. Can you speak to that and what solutions, if you have any, if not, I mean, we have other companies we use, but I'm just curious. We have an awesome shower filter that people love oh, cool. um, that, that softens the water, uses infrared uh, minerals to do the infrared uh, structuring of the, of the water itself. It also has nano silver, so it kills bacteria. So that's a really popular kind of point of excess shower filter. Um, we're also very soon coming out with a laundry filter. Um, Gina sees some of those new designs. It's a clip-on filter and also the vanity sink filter so you can brush your teeth in good, clean, somewhat structured. Maybe we're thinking of adding hydrogen to that just because that's really good for your gums, right? So that's also coming around the corner. You know, everyone's just kind of going through the whole shipping supply chain COVID thing the last couple of years. And we've just been waiting to find the right time to launch these particular products. And I think sometime towards the end of the year or early next year is the plan is to bring it all in. And, uh, but right now available is already the shower filter. And this is kind of a way of building a whole house system if without actually having a whole house system where these filters just go as a little clip under your sink. So you can switch it out, little twist on, twist off, real simple way of doing the point of exit. Um, people still can get the whole house system, but we just figured out an easier way if they wanted to have it a kind of a point of exit system, right? To have it available right away one of the things i want to let the community that's ha know that's happening so Ayn and i have purchased and are moving into our brand new house which is a townhouse which is a big change for Ayn and i from a single family home to a townhouse i never thought i'd live in a townhouse but bottom line is it works for our life and our community and our son right now uh, anybody want to guess why I didn't want to move in a townhouse community? Anybody want to take a stab at it? Do you think it has anything to do with Wi-Fi by chance? Because I can control my Wi-Fi, but can I control their Wi-Fi and their Wi-Fi and all the Wi-Fi? So what I'm doing, and, and water was another part of this for me, because one of the reasons we were in our home for 11 years that we were in is because it was a well, and it was well with public septic, believe it or not. Public septic and well. It's very difficult to find those two things together. We're like, buy that house before it gets off the market. But now I haven't lived, I've been living in well water for like probably 45 years of my life out of 48. Like I have only showered in well water. I don't, and I test my well water and I just like, when I have to go to hotels, I'm like the jackrabbit in and out of the shower so fast. She didn't even know that I was there because it just irritates my skin. So I'm, I'm going to make a video that's going to show you how to hack your home because one of the things <laughs> I want is I, I don't want all my, my pipes are brand new. I want them to stay clean. And then I want to, so I want something for the whole home and then at point of use as well. And then we're going to hack it for the Wi-Fi so we can create a, a, a bubble around our house with Oregon and EMF rocks and different things to help recreate nature and make our home 
acceptable to this organism and not killing the microbiome and the biofield, literally damaging that which would slowly degenerate my body. We will, well, Kelly, uh, I, that you have just made this perfect, um, the, the, the making ourselves well hydrated, we become the point of protection for everything else that happens. Right. And this is why I care about hydration so much. People just think I'm talking about nice skin or, you know, good liver function. I'm talking about being a walking, um, uh, ju a, 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 a bubble of uh, juicy tissue that's, you know, constantly bringing in threat and able to uh, synchronize it, change it and move it on out and also make materials out of it, organic materials. So mm -hmm. hydration and the water molecules and what, and by the way, I, I know we've said this before, but by molecular count, Water molecules are so tiny that you are mostly made of water molecules. You're 99% water molecules. That's an extraordinary figure. We don't think of ourselves as water yeah. essences, but you'll be able to move through your house, your society, your day as a protected, you know, entity, water entity by having, simply having water inside of you that's in sync. And there are many ways to do that. One is making sure you have a whole you know, a filter in your house if you're using that water, but also by the foods that you eat, you know, the minerals you get yourself and the um, the motion that you move to use the life, because even, even motion puts these water molecules in sync with each other. And, and you, you know, you just become a dynamic fluid moving force. And, and, well hydrated. and that's what I want to share with people. It's like, I don't take a lot of supplements. I remineralize and I do a lot of lymphatic work and fascia work to make sure my flow is going, but I don't take a lot of anything and I eat pretty much anything I want. I mean, most of the time it's organic and high quality and all the things, but I'm just saying like, I'm not going to, they're putting bread in front of me and I'm in a nice restaurant. I know it's nice crusty bread with beautiful olive oil. I'm having some. I'm not going to I'm not going to deny myself of that pleasure because I love food so much. That being said, it was interesting when this whole town house came up. I was like, I don't want to be limited where we can live because I don't think that I can offset what I know is a known damaging experience. I mean, we lived before where you could see Limerick Towers, which are uh, nuclear power plants. You could literally see them in the, like, oh, there they are, right there. Uh-huh. Like, either, where are you going to live now where there's not something dangerous? You're living under Wi-Fi towers, high-tension wires. You're living under ground, over ground water. You're living somewhere where the electromagnetic field is screwed up and screwing up your electromagnetic field. We all have to learn how to re- calibrate our electromagnetic field of the home that we live in so it helps us support us so we become the strong magnetic field so that we are moving through life with a structured water and easy and everything because frequency i just want to say frequency always wins highest frequency by the way always wins and all the lower frequencies it's a it's a i don't want to call it a law because i don't like laws but it's a quantum physics experience that always <laughs> happens <laughs> that when there's a higher frequency all the other frequencies want to calibrate to it so if you have three people in a room and one's really sick the two people in the room that are healthier the one person in the room that's healthy is going to help the other two people that are sick increase their frequency that's part of what sound of soul has proven through Rasmus when he created that converting heart rate variability into light and sound and putting two people on together, the person with the highest frequency will always win and the person that's lower resonance will resonate with a higher resonance. That's why dogs are so great. <laughs> dogs increase your frequency because the dog always has the best frequency and way better than humanity and is always going to up level humanity's frequency. Mm -hmm. So frequency and water. How the heck do you get frequency in water and what is, how to do, do I just drink this water and it makes me healthy for the rest of my life? And can you talk about that a little bit, Kenny? <laughs> the, 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 the correct answer is yes, drink the water, make you healthy. That's also the quick answer. That's the only answer I have. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, yeah, we, we looked at all the different minerals, um, different crystals out there. So the one known that's the Myfunstone crystals are really well known. 
volvic crystal. So it's an old ancient mineral you can find in Taiwan from the old volcanic eruptions. And then the leftovers, the minerals. And when you purify that at a thousand degrees Celsius, you get rid of all the impurities around, you get the center. And then you can run the water. That becomes a source of minerals. But remember what I said earlier, minerals also emit natural electromagnetic fields, right? So you have to understand you've got, you've got, a, you've got a broad spectrum of frequency to deal with. And you have to understand which mineral deals with which mineral and how they all work hand in hand together. So when you make the 14, the filters, that's the rock layer process. You have to understand how the whole thing can work together like an ecosystem, right? That took a while to figure out, but that took a lot of trial and error. And then so, so we can only talk about the ones like the Myfun stone, which we know from studies, you know, it can obviously give off magnesium, calcium, iron, copper, zinc, selenium. It's made what 65% silica as well. So it's got silica as well. So it, it has all the different, I think up to 26% or 26 different micronutrients that it gives out. But then that also emits different frequencies, right? And gives the water its I guess it's energy, if that's the right way of saying it, give it coherency, gives it structure, gives it life. So when it comes out on the other side of the tap, it's fresh. It feels like the water is living again. It feels like there's something in the water, that the water is alive. So we, so for some people, you know, we drink the living water. That's why it tastes different. That's why it's very hydrating. It comes out in that structured phase or structured state. Same quality of water you find inside a blueberry, a strawberry, an, an apple, a banana, or a pear. But, you know, we all pear, according to Gina, it's what, 96% water, is that correct? They're, they're yeah. all very high. We don't know yeah. why bother with the details. Right. They're all above 89% water. Oh, geez. Six, wow. 89. So pick. Everybody wants to know what's the most hydrated. I'm like, you know what? You get to have the whole bandwidth. Just pick something wonderful. So. Right. Variety. Variety is the key. I love it. So the frequency and the EMFs. Let's talk about EMFs because everybody hears word EMF and they go, oh, such a bad thing. EMFs. We're talking about the difference between scalar energy and one directional EMF. And there's a big difference between that. Do either one of you want to speak to that briefly? No, nobody wants Any? to. Well, I just, I can just tell you from consumer experience that we have a lot of customers that when they, before they buy the water, they're very EMF sensitive. So they can't be close to 5G or 4G. They get the ringing in the ear. They get the headaches. They just can't stand it. Now, what do you think happens when, when Gina calls, calls the great solvent, which is water, and the great harmonizer, which is the water, and you drink that? Well, what we found out was just a day on our water, they would call me and say, all oh, the ringing in the ear is gone. The headaches are gone. That's all completely gone. So when you can raise the vibrational frequency of your body through good water, and you can realign the 99% of the water molecules that you have, because EMF, think of the 99% water molecules. If they're coherently aligned and they're beautifully, like a, like a beautiful netting, a tennis racket, the nettings, the, the racket strings are very much coherent, nicely put together with nice spacing. EMF kind of disperses that process, right? But if you can coherently align that, the 99% of water molecules in your body, and you begin to realize that your body is 99% water, <laughs> you begin to figure out, I guess drinking the right type of water is kind of important. <laughs> Right, you, mean, it's you can find that. the Wonder Woman shield, like bam, bam. <laughs> cannot get me because I have structured water inside my body, and so the Wi-Fi harmonizes when it hits me, and now I can, <laughs> I can handle it. Can you speak to coherence, Gina? Well, you know what? I think I, I think yes. The, the the synchronization of the water molecules. Mm. Um they not only create the netting that Kenny's talking about. So you have to understand that water's doing like 20 million things at the same time. We've only stumbled on a very few of them. So water makes is moist, right? That's just like its basic function. That's how we tend to think of it. And we tend to, when we say we're water beings, people think liquid and they mistake the idea that our bodies are buoyant jelly cells. They're full of little gel, it's a, it's a buoyancy. And when you think about, so if you think about an incoming wave or a sound coming into a buoyant gel-like material, you're going to have a very different reaction than if that sound comes in through liquid. So the ability of uh, the gel-like phase of water 
to absorb, re, uh, slow down, uh, organize, dissolve, shape. It's got its own timing and it will take its time. It can't be forced into quick, you know, behavior. This, this is where our bodies are able to deal with so much more coming in. Mm -hmm. So, so that's just, those are just two things I've mentioned, right? So there's moisting and moisturizing. Oh, I know we love that word. We just love the word. It's may water makes us moist, but also it has this quality of, of gel like buoyancy that changes and alchemizes. Now on top of those two functions, water is also an information transfer system. So when you talk about coherency, now you're talking about how that buoyant water is also sending signals according to what's incoming and how it's going to manage it, like the great, you know, administrative office. So that information system is made of this gel-like water that passes coherent information and is constantly making the information as coherent as it possibly can. That's its job. That's what it wants to do. It's always seeking that harmonizing level. So it's like, what do we got? Well, bring me, you know, bring me some glyphosate. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to shape that and harmonize it and deal with it and send it on. So being well hydrated with water molecules that are in sync and coherent and in this gel like phase is extremely important to how we survive in the kind of environments we're living in now mm -hmm. and how we can go forward without having to like wear shields and wear you know uh, walk around in these bubbles of safety that we ourselves become that i just uh, just not to confuse your listeners too i said um that uh that the, the gel stage well the gel stage is a spectrum of uh, texture so it goes from just 10% more viscous than liquid. It starts its electrical charge right at that stage. So it can be very water-like, the water we're used to thinking of in the liquid form, all the way to the density that we now understand even bones are a form of crystalline water <laughs> that's that dense and that, that concentrated. So, but it's all water. Shout out to the fascia at that very moment because fascia, <laughs> like the plasma that she is speaking of, and this fourth phase of water, and I just want to speak to the word phase for a second because you talked about phases of water and then we're talking about coherence, and that has to do with phases of frequency. These are two different ways to use this terminology of phase. And so there's four phases, four. Um, What's another word for phase? You have gas, you have liquid, you have um, ice. ice, and then you have this fourth phase. So it's the fourth shape, mm -hmm. the fourth shape that water takes. And then- oh, Stages. Stages, thank you. Stages. And then phase, phase in regards to two waves that are in, a, in phase or out of phase means that they are either in harmony that they're together or they're doing things that are not in phase and their their wavelengths are opposites not necessarily opposites but not in harmony out with sync. each other out of sync thank you kenny perfect mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. out of sync and if you're not watching this please go watch i'm doing some great hand motions over here for <laughs> so you want things to be in sync and that creates the beautiful sounds and the frequency is now harmonizing and that is now held through the water and then the fascia really becomes, it can be liquid or it can be more structured like bone. I mean, bone has been known to be called just more dense fascia and it can be a particle or a wave, fascia can, and it holds the water and hydrates or doesn't hydrate the body by holding in the microtubules that will relate down into the cells and bringing the light through the microtubules that are hydrated or not based upon this phase that we're talking about. Wow. <laughs> well done. She who swims with dolphins, clearly. <laughs> I would love to swim with dolphins all the time. Um, but just, this just, 
Um, just to people understand, like the phase, the, the you know, we the, the three different stages of water, solid, liquid, and ice. And we talked about the fourth stage of the phase is the structured water. Just an analogy I tell people, it's just think of the water inside fruits and vegetables, water inside a cucumber, the water inside um, trees, and anything that's living greens, all that water is in that structured phase or stage, I should say. All the water in the spring water in the mountain. And the, the great significance of that, what, what I learned was working with Gina was the when we looked at the Incas in the desert, they didn't have they were not actually drinking water to survive. They were eating plants. And so when you look at the plant tubers and the water inside the plants, that's all structured water. And you realize that that water is two to three times more hydrating. So just to help relate a little bit, so I think if we understand it from that perspective, I think that's where my aha moment goes, well, maybe I can drink less water and be more hydrated, you know, and maybe I can stay hydrated for much longer, right? Well, and that brings me to coconut, coconut water, right? Everybody thinks coconut water is so great and it's so hydrating because it's full of electrolytes. But if you open up a coconut, part of it's liquid, part of it's this like meteor substance. Right. But it's all the same thing. It's just in different phases. And that's kind of what we're we're speaking about and so fun to talk about now i want to get to the soil and talking about hydrating the soil because you had said in the beginning that you guys are looking at working with different organizations to teach them about how you can hydrate soil so that it can self-clean like a self-cleaning oven so that we don't have to clean up on aisle five over there because we had a spill in the soil or spill in the water how can the water actually clean itself like i mean algae has been kind of smart for a long time i don't know why people more people don't talk about algae and spirulina and krell and how brilliant they are but anyway go ahead and talk about that if you will not spirulina krella, water and soil. Yeah, water. Well, water ultimately becomes spirulina. It ultimately becomes, you know, it is actually materializing those. Why? Because it's sending the right song to that particular material to make it become the thing it is. So we're, you know, water, the production, the, the song that water sings to whatever it's around is how it becomes the material thing it becomes. Now, that was a crazy thing to say, but we'll just let that rest. And now we're going to talk about soil <laughs> because soil is um, mostly uh, microorgan many microorganisms in colonies, all of which need to be highly hydrated in order to pass nutrition and information into the plants and into the mycelium. So getting this better quality water to the soil makes perfect sense, right? And actually that's how water always worked. It's just that we have so globally contaminated water. We have so globally interfered with the song that water is singing that uh, uh, that it's all over, it's spread all over the world now, these, this incoherent water. And that's what we're watering all our soils with. So if we can get together and make possible to get this coherent water as our irrigation again. Wow, that's the ignition of the entire soil system, the crop system, the plants, food security, growing trees again. It's the ignition for recovering our ecology as a whole. Water, beginning with water. And, and said Guru, uh, the mystic from yeah. India, and Zach Bush have been talking about soil for the last couple of years and knowing that we've got to fix the soil. And it sounds as though by just simply using hydrated water, which is full of minerals, we will remineralize our soil. And what I've been saying for years is that there's two things in life you have to do for the rest of your life until we figure out how to remineralize our soils and until we stop living in the toxic soup of which we've created, which is remineralize and move your lymph. But I know, because I'm the eternal optimist, I'm thinking you two are both pretty optimistic <laughs> as well, <laughs> that they're as damaging as we've been to our earth mother, to the water, there's still more land and water than we know what to do with, and there's plenty of time to turn it around and clean it all up and restructure it and reharmonize and elevate everybody's frequency so we're not dependent upon having to lymph and remineralize the rest of our lives. All we have to do is drink good, proper, live water and breathe fresh air and get sun and love. Yes. Amen. 
Mm -hmm. Agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I learned about the whole mission on planet um, when I first met the Hydration Foundation. We were young kids, excited about water, excited about sharing, hydrating people. And then Gina comes to, and to our team and says, hey, you guys left out Mother Earth. I'm like, well, what? Have you thought about hydrating the soil and do soil water recovery? So I thought, like, are we going to become like a charity now? I was like, what's, what's going on now? <laughs> and I, I was like, what, what's happening? But then she educated our team. No, no, you guys don't understand. Because of the EMF, because of the pollution, because of all the toxins in the planet, that the water, I mean, think about it. The, the apple that we eat today is not the same apple what it was 60 years ago. Right. And the, app, the nutrition quality is so different. And the apple we're going to eat probably five years from now, if we don't, if we don't do anything to this planet, it's going to get worse. Because soil quality is getting worse every single day. So Gina said to us, look, your water can rehydrate the soil properly. So get water into the soil. And that water is going to start to create the electrical function of the soil below and help the microbial community do. And whatever grows on top of that is going to benefit from it. That's when I start to realize, well, you know what? This mission isn't just really about hydrating people, which is part of the mission, but really there's a greater movement behind this whole process and as mother earth really needs somebody or some team or some group of people to do what i call water recovery right so the vision for me got a lot bigger it's not just about the home systems really now it's about the whole land about every business every agricultural community everything you grow even your backyard there's customers that use our water to, to water the plants say that the plants grow two three times faster it's incredible so the, the, the proof is already there and so we just had to make a complete shift, obviously being heart centered is what we really believe in, but the shift is also for the greater good, right? And we're not, we don't want to be in the way. We want to just be part of that process. It's greater than us and be, and be, be contributing to that mission, right? So if, you, if we drank our water and peed it out, per se, that water now is going to go onto our land in our house and we can start doing water recovery on our house. So that's a way to think about it. if you had a, you know, a million households doing that i guess that's a way to start right or you can now get this water out to educate people without new technology just begin the water recovery and the soil recovery which i think is going to solve a lot of problems that we have today yeah so it's a much greater mission to be part of and this is why i unselfishly put our water filter at our office instead of our house because I wanted our clients to experience your water and right. I wanted them to have the upgrade when they're here. It helps us get better therapies. I, we were in a commercial area and we aren't Wi-Fi, but everybody else is. And so I know it helps them. But, and then I tell them all to bring jugs, empty glass jugs with them when they come to the center and fill up and take as home much as, water, you as much as you need. I mean, I, I don't know, honestly, the answer to this question. So I'm asking purely out of, curiosity like how long does your filter last does it is it an amount of gallons that it does because i would imagine there's no filters to replace given what you're doing <laughs> well for the drinking system there's a flow meter in the machine so you'll max it out eventually or yeah. you just go by 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 time right and if we 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 have some technologies coming out for agriculture those are usually tested once a year to test the coherency so we do keep a kind of a way to do some qc work People can just, we can find ways to keep it going. And if, if it's testing bad, just get another one, which is easy to replace. So yeah. we've got some ideas put together right now. But yeah, it's, it's nice. And it's nice that you do heart center work for, for your clients because people can fill it up. They love the water. And I think, I think a lot of our customers um, in California or other areas are doing the same thing just because they see the benefits. And yeah. people come back saying they sleep better. They feel better. They feel more hydrated. You know, and I think... We should. We all should be doing that. Like Gina wrote in the book, "The Quench." You know, um, if you if you don't have access to structured water, go get go buy a bag of chia seeds. Right. Put some chia seeds in the water. Put some lemon in the water. Right. Or add a pinch of Rayon. Celtic's Talk. whatever. Ask it to give you structured water and coherent water, and it will. Yeah, and uh, and our company, we're all about supporting every single possible mean to make people feel better. And I think should, they should take action today. And go to go go get a bag of chia seeds now and go home and start doing that. You'll see, you'll feel better tomorrow. So yeah. we're all about supporting hydration. We're all about supporting Mother Earth. Um, and just you know, we're a young group of kids. And uh, when we started, which is eight years ago, so a little bit older now. But you know, 
And, and we had a, our company had to grow, grow into a heart centered phase, but also grow, grow into embracing other people, embracing the technologies out there, embracing the market as well, right? And offer proper education. And so we're about that so that we can, we can really help Mother Earth, but with the help of everybody else doing the same thing. Yeah. So if somebody gets this, you would recommend you water all your plants with it, you give it to your pets for sure, you uh, cook with it, you clean your vegetables with it. I wouldn't waste it maybe to wash your dishes, but outside of that, <laughs> I would use it for literally everything and then get a, sh I recommend getting a shower filter sooner than later. Like I know uh, I'm a little late <laughs> in placing my order because we move into our house in three weeks, but hopefully we can get one of those shower filters sooner than later and the under the counter system because I won't move into that house until all that stuff is in. I, you I know, it, you're right about it. We, we never actually taught the customers. They just, customers people just have their own intuition and people just started you know started watering their plants <laughs> yeah. and people started making coffee and tea and pasta and rice and soaking the fruits and vegetables and now we have people um buy an extra system put it underneath the bathroom sink and they're bathing this water running hot water through it so i mean people are, they're creative and and it's an incredible experience but we support whatever it means away but as long as it's natural they feel they're not being pressured they do what they want I think that's the most important. And people are already doing a lot of cool things now. Yeah. And so if you get one of these systems, please let us know all the ways that you can use it so we can help educate others about that as well. Because, I mean, I remember long ago when I was learning about how damaging microwaves were. This is like 20 years ago, 25 years ago. I did an experiment. I mean, I read everything, but I'm still a total skeptic. And so <laughs> I had two bamboo plants because that was about the only thing I could grow in my life. So I took two bamboo plants and I microwaved the water, let it warm up to room temperature. And then I fed the one plant the microwave water and I fed the other one just plain old tap water, which according to me, either one would suck. But the one with the tap water lived and the one in the microwave water like died within three to four weeks. And I've had so many clients replicate this in their home and that's when I was like, please throw away your microwave. Like, look at what the hell it's doing to this plant and to the water, right. all the food and all the stuff. But it, it's, that's, if you question this, get the water, buy two plants, feed one the hydrogen water, feed the other one's not hydrogen water and see what the difference is. And then replicate that and know that that's what's happening to you and your family when you're not drinking hydrogen water versus when you are drinking hydrogen, not just hydrogen water, structured. Structured water. Yeah proper water that happens to be hydro hydrolyzed hydrolyzed <laughs> hydrogen infused <laughs> i'm like that doesn't sound right hydrolyzed is <laughs> creating and the i love what gina said the frequency needs a mobile vehicle and the water molecule is the perfect vehicle to bring in that information that's and i think beautiful. that's what silicon valley is trying to do they're trying to figure out how the hell all that information gets in water and the tiniest little opportunity there's space but it creates it has so much information in it and silicon valley is trying to replicate that right as well as funny. The mushrooms yeah. they're trying to figure out the network of the mushrooms we're all mushrooms by the way we're all just fungus filled with water we're all connected in a network called source energy welcome to the beats with kelly kennedy <laughs> Yes, uh, I, I uh, the last uh, uh, water conference, worldwide water conference I attended um, in uh, Germany, they, this year, that year, uh, several computer scientists showed up and they were buttonholing all these physicists saying, how does water carry information? We, we, we want to replicate this. We understand that it does that, but to tell us how. And, then, <laughs> and I just was laughing because well, you already are a walking uh, supersonic computer. You already are. You know, this is what we are, um, as well as this exquisite, you know, uh, instrument that plays music. And um, I want to commend you for being, uh, you know, having your system for your clients right there in your, your clinic because you've become the classic village well right where all the information gets exchanged this is where we find our social life where we find i mean just becoming the the, the, the village well already is a new place we're missing in our society and uh, we used to say gathering around the water 
you know, the water thing, but it's cooler. Yeah. Not quite as interesting as what you're doing. And I also was thinking about how people watering their lawns and their gardens, you know, this is saturating into the soil and it's sending out through the mycelium better information to mm. every, all your neighbors. You know, we, we don't realize how far water can communicate and send its information. It's very powerful. So if we're just one small, you know, group of household that has this, what we're doing, the amount of information we're sending out is really, it's quite extraordinary. You think about all those lawns recovered. It's amazing. In an urban environment. And, and I want to encourage with information. You're like, oh, wow. You know, better songs. That's what I, I, want, to, I want to encourage all of our local clients to drive around with your empty glass bottles and you do not have to have an appointment. Please come in, like I've said before, and just fill up. I want you all to drink this water all the time. So until you can afford your own, do that and, and allow yourself to have that. Because even if you're going to water your plants at home, I think it's a great idea based upon what she said. You want to be a good neighbor? help expand your frequency by expanding your frequency. I love this idea. <laughs> this and, you know, now you can, and he's like, yes, yes. Yeah, this, <laughs> eating beautiful uh, fresh fruits and vegetables, especially mushrooms, <laughs> because mushrooms carry information. And for a long time, our society wasn't eating them broadly. We were missing all that soil information in our health. And so mushrooms are a kind of health food, health frequency, health song that's quite extraordinary. And if you don't like the taste, just, you know, buy a gorgeous, you know, high quality powder. And I sneak it into my husband's smoothies. You have no idea. Of course, he's a very cheerful person. <laughs> now that he's having <laughs> mushrooms and, and Kenny water, structured water every day. Kenny water. <laughs> That's what we're calling it now, Kenny Water. And <laughs> That's what my husband calls it. The, it. The, the fungal component of this, I don't, I don't want to really. It's a, and we could do a whole podcast on that. And perhaps we will with Dr. James O'Dowd. I'd love to do that with you, maybe, and him. He, um, because what I know about mushrooms is very little, but what I do know about mushrooms is. Holy hell, are we not paying enough attention to the mushrooms? And th I saw a documentary, I don't know, two years ago, where all the mushrooms are connected in the network under in the earth. And so and when mushrooms. Yes. He's a and, and it's beautiful. He's really opened up that. Yes. Ages. It's beautiful. And it's the concept of tensegrity from the fascia. So if I get. A, I, I have a scar over here, right. it's going to affect everything over here. So the mushroom in California has a problem, and the one in Australia might send it some information. Exactly. And you're like, that's, that's, not, that's not a theory. That is, we're no. now able to trace that. And, and what I do want to say to our mushroom world, our, our my mushroom professionals and colleagues, is the mycelium itself is a, is pro, is probably 98% water. It is an extremely high, the whole network is all run on water. We're calling it the mycelium and the root system and people get it because the wiring, but the wiring, the root system is just there to conduct the water. Conduct the water, just like the fascia is conducting the water throughout the body. And just from a pleomorphic perspective, terrain medicine theory, we all are three funguses, Aspergillus niger, Mucor racemus, and Nodotum penicillium. That's what we are, and from nothing comes something. So a sterile field will sit there, and all of a sudden, out will pop these three non-pathogenic funguses, which is what the human genome is created from, and then we have a little water added to us, and bam, there you go. Boy. Out to human. <laughs> Bam, human. Well, but Kelly, this has been an amazing conversation. I, I never fail to be delighted by the doors you open to discuss and think about. And, you know, our future really depends on the quality of water, our quality. whole future, the planets, all the microbes. We all need to be part of the recovery of water movement. So, Thank you for helping us open this up. And yeah, thank you for both you. such quality people and and really assisting the mission and the efforts to change the world. And oh, we're just hydrated. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
It's, it's been beautiful. I've really, this filled my heart as much as I know it would. And I just love you both so much. Thank you for doing what you do in the world and continuing to educate and be available and give of your time as you both always do. And I just, I'm thankful that everybody who's been listening and please share this if this resonates with you. Share this with people, help them understand the quality of water. There's a lot of people spending a lot of money on water that could be cheaper, way cheaper. And you got to look at like, what is the the long-term cost versus the short-term cost because you can get water for pennies on the pennies a gallon instead of dollars a way more than dollars a gallon and way better quality and way more accessible and then really consider whatever you put in and on your skin is being absorbed in so really pay attention not only what you're drinking but what you're bathing and showering in and you know from the water snob from 25 years ago and still to this day i love water i love all you i love you too and we all are connected through our water and through our mycelium and so from truly <laughs> our hearts to yours we send you love and water and flow Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> now have a great day, everybody. Thank you so much for listening today to this episode of The Beats. And as your host, Kelly Kennedy, truly from my heart to yours, thank you for your time and your attention today. And if this did resonate with you, please do leave some comments. We would love to hear from you. And if this further you think would resonate with somebody that you know, please do go ahead and share that and hit that notification button so you know when The Beats is available to you. We do do some live things every once in a while. Um, and as always, we pray that this information today was not only foundational, but raised some questions for you and helped you be empowered to take actionable, profound steps toward regeneration because your body is the only thing that heals. And that is our message here on The Beats. Thanks again for listening and for sharing. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.